So what's that helping with? 
more motor units, definitely helping with flexibility. Is it helping with mus muscular endurance? Probably not. Is it helping our bodies move through space dynamically? Probably not so much. It's usually a ballistic. We're just isolating one uh, joint. Dynamic stretching. to be 
Association potentiation is actually a phenomenon that's been studied uh, in the last 10 to 15 years, and it's still kind of underground, but basically what it says is that a muscle's isometric contractile history, so basically what they just lifted right before doing a performance, is actually going to impact how much power output they're able to um, give. So the way that they're using, the way that they've used this in performance, they've had sprinters, for example, go and do some heavy, heavy, almost uh, almost close to their one rep max um, squats right before going into a sport performance. So the fatigue, the um, detrimental attributes of fatigue, they're um, outweighed by the benefits because they're recruiting more motor units to actually be able to sprint faster and to be able to, to create more power. So um, post-activation potentiation is an increase in force and rate um, and rate of force development that occurs as a result previously contracted muscle activation. And I know I'm getting really sciencey on you, but it's pretty cool to see that there's this phenomenon out there, and that I kind of came across it by accident once I started playing with clubbell yoga. I'm like, why is it that after I do a clubbell weighted flow, I feel so much stronger and so much more aligned when I do an unweighted flow? And I, I have a sneaky suspicion that it probably has to do with post-activation Look that up, go to Google Scholar and just Google that and read a couple articles on it. It's pretty fascinating stuff. They've only run, ran a few different studies um, on it, so it's still, the, the, the studies are not all conclusive because obviously the methods are different for each study. Um, but another way that it has been tested, so you know how a baseball player wants to have a pretty fast swing with the bat? So imagine an apparatus that allows you to um, hook a baseball bat to a fence or to a chain link fence, so you're out in the field, you've got your bat here and you're basically applying as much isometric force as you can. So you're mimicking the same motor pattern that you're about to do prior to, before you swing. You do that um, a minute before you go up to bat. So what they found when they tested this in the lab, that you're actually able to swing the bat at a higher velocity, so you have greater power output after doing that uh, contra it's the contractile history of the muscles involved in the sh shoulder girdle and the hip and the trunk. Everything, you're basically like blueprinting the bat swing before um, doing the actual swing. So it may seem like, oh yeah, that's totally obvious, of course that would work. But only in the past like five to 10 years have they actually started finding this stuff out. Hey guys, do you guys have a shoot today? No, uh, I'm the DS class, but that's in about oh, okay. an hour. No, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. So I get really excited about this stuff because I'm an exercise science nerd, but um, I think that it does lend itself well to clubbell yoga to understand that those motor fire, those motor patterns that we're creating with the lifting um, and doing tracing all those motor pathways and then applying the weighted and unweighted flows, that's basically why we feel the way that we do so. So when we did that today, we did flow and then we set the clubbell down and did it again without it. Was that Simulating. So there's uh, simulating post-activation potentiation. So post-activation potentiation is the is the name of the phenomenon. There's different ways to apply it in the field. So they've got the baseball bat people, they've got the squat people that are te testing things. I haven't tested clubbell yoga in the lab yet. However, I would really like to run a study on that. So let's yeah. team up on that. You can do that with my students. Yeah. Well, I have I have access to the lab. I have oh, access. I, so I, I want to get totally in there. that out. Yeah. <laughs>
we've been finding through like we hold like a kettlebell and like a half squat isometric for at like 60 intensity and according to the frequency, then you do that for about a minute, then you go through the sled again, you put out like 150 more watts just of power. And so it's just it's a similar thing to where it's like almost I think of it like an etch a sketch, you know, how you reach that and you just get everything lined up and then you go do it. And that's kind of I mean, like today I Literally, that first time we did that that one, uh, was the one where like the opposite of four or two, where you're like crossed over lunch. Yeah. Um, I didn't really get into that, but the third time, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was just. Yeah. So what you're probably noticing on the vibration plate is basically like the counter-receptors uh, elements that help with proprioception, because you're feeling like you're a little bit more off balance, so it is we, it is recruiting more motor units to be able to balance there. So I would.
your heart faces the ground, and then roll your heart up towards the ceiling. Again, roll down with an exhale. Inhale up and exhale down. Cool. Last one. Inhale up and exhale down. two to skandhasana, that's a dynamic movement because you're taking your adductor to a 
you're starting in warrior two, and then, boom, I'm stretching my adductor. This might be my end range of motion. I'm going there, I'm visiting it for a second, boom, and then I'm going back to a strength pose. I'm dynamically moving in and out of the stretch. So that's why I, I consider warrior two to skandhasana. Unweighted, a dynamic awakening exercise. And have you guys noticed your adductors getting more and more loose over oh, time? So that's like my favorite move. Like, I can I barely do that before, and like I still have a lot of like, that one. But it really does, over time with practice, it helps to open it up. And it's pretty amazing to see what just a little loose with a dynamic move. Is there a difference between? So if you never want to 
go here. You don't want to go beyond 90 degrees. You want to keep your body upright in Warrior Two. Easiest version is to pull it in here. Harder version, straight out in front. Some people perceive this as easier because they're able to counterbalance. So it's up to you what your body perceives as harder. Both of those are options. You want to try to keep your heel down. Probably not. Squat and twist. We did that one today. That's here. Squat and twist. Dynamic. I was having you guys do those fast so that you're able to train at a high velocity to be able to recruit more motor units to go fast is going to have power. And then lunge with the twist. The lower body is doing something different than the upper body. Here to here. But I asked you to absorb the weight under your ground, under your feet, so that you're not moving a lot of noise. Which basically helps you to have eccentric control. Did you eventually switch out the lunge? That's more of a tactical lunge. So a yogi lunge would be basically just getting more flexibility in the hip flexor. So if I had a more advanced yoga practitioner that was able to actually keep their back leg straight, here to here. Typically, um, it's not common to have people that are able to do the whole really much, but yeah, that would be the preferred safety progression. Good question. So the body weight ones that we visited today, we just did. So base switch, you're in a quad press position, and the hands are facing forward versus in here. And then you can thread the hand through here to here, so you're getting thoracic rotation, but still core activation to hold it up. So my intra abdominal pressure when I do this is turned on, should be. If it's not, something is lacking. So when you're doing these, palpate here and see if you actually have intra abdominal pressure. It should feel hard to the touch. If it doesn't, Pregnant, that's okay. <laughs> um, if it doesn't turn it on, basically, maybe take some time to establish that blueprint so your core should be strong here. And then use that memory to go here. You just kind of basically set yourself up for success there. So base switches are the ones where you bend the knees, sit through, um, sit through knee. There's so many different names for everything. So there's there's let's see, the easiest, very, very easiest version is to actually go here. This is sit through hip. No, no, sorry. Sit through knee is the easiest. Then sit through hip is harder. And then ba full base switch here to here is hardest. So sorry if there's confusion on Moving on to the practice section. So these are 
examples of um, pose combos that would allow you to basically practice dynamic movement in, in yoga asana. So your loaded warrior two to skandasana, I've already demonstrated that one. Um, so we basically put that into a flow somehow. Um, twisted high lunge to a warrior two, so that one. Thank 
follows, starts to trace along the wall, moves up into the candle, through the wall, and then back. And return to starting. Thank you.